Now, bubble sort is one of those algorithms that you're probably never going to use at your job, but one that you have to learn anyways. So please pay attention to today's video if you don't want to get ridiculed at your job by your coworkers or your future coworkers. Yo! Some ninjas, welcome back to the Golang Dojo, your number one resource for all things Go. Make sure to get your free, yes, free Golang cheat sheet at golangdojo.com slash cheat sheet. Now, this is the very first algorithm that I'm implementing in Go on this channel. So please let me know in the comment section down below and tell me if this is the type of videos that you would like to continue seeing on the channel. Or if you have any other suggestions, just drop them down below. I read every single one of your comments. Bubble sort. Bubble sort is one of the most well-known sorting algorithms out there. It is typically the very first sorting algorithm people get started with when they are first trying to learn how to put a collection of values that may or may not already be in order uh, and transform it into one that is. So why should we use the bubble sort to compare it to any other sorting algorithm? The biggest reason is bubble sort is the simplest sorting algorithm. It is the most straightforward, typically, towards beginners. However, you should know that it is not the most efficient sorting algorithm by most measures. The time complexity of the bubble sort algorithm is quadratic, and the spatial complexity of the bubble sort is constant as you can sort elements in place without having to allocate additional memory. So how does the algorithm actually work? It works by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements, a process as known as a bubbling up, if these adjacent elements are in the wrong order. For example, let's say that we have a collection of numbers 91429 right here. And we are trying to sort this collection of numbers into ascending order. So 1, 2, 4, 6, 9 is the final result. We will select a two-element window starting from the beginning, being 1 and 6, add index 0 and 1. If these two adjacent elements are not in order, which they aren't, then we perform a swap. Now that this two-element window is sorted, we can move on to the next two-element window, 6 and 4. Because if they aren't in order, we will perform a swap again. Repeat that until the last two elements in this collection of numbers. So that's one round of bubbling up. And then we just need to repeat the above process n times so that each number gets a chance to get bubbled all the way up until the entire collection is completely sorted. So let's move on to the implementation of the solution. So there are four steps that we need to handle. One is working out the logic to be able to swap the elements given the two indices and the collection. Second, we'll be checking the order to see if the uh, the elements add these two indices if they are in order. If yes, then we don't do anything. If not, we will perform the swap that we previously imp implemented. Next, we will need to repeat this process do and, and perform the one round of bubbling and we will need to perform um uh we will need to repeat this one round bubbling n times in order to uh, come up with a completely sorted collection at the end for the swap action we can create this swap function which will take in three parameters the first parameter being the collection of numbers of a type int slice and then the two indices, the two positions that we need to perform the swap action on. Now, when we are trying to perform the swap action, it's very tempted to write our instructions like this. Assigning the number add position i with the value add position j. And assign the position j with the value add position i. However, there is a problem. Now, let's say that position i and j are equal to 0 and 1. 
and we are trying to perform the swap like this. However, if we try to execute these two instructions, one by one, we will find out that we are trying to assign J, which is one, to I. So we will, this will be I. And next we will try to take the value at I, which is now one instead of two, and put it at a J. So this will be one as well. As you can see, this is not what the expected final result is. To fix that, we will need to introduce a new placeholder, temporary placeholder, to hold the original value at position I, which is a two. With this, we don't have to worry about doing the reassignment at a position i, the original value at a position i getting lost. Next, we can perform the reassignment to position i with the value at a position j as usual. The value at a position j is 1. After that, we will need to pay a little bit more attention because we don't want to assign the new value at a position i to position j. We want to assign the value um, at uh, the value of the temporary placeholder instead to position j. Because this placeholder holds the original value at a position i. With this, we've successfully performed the swap action. Okay, let's try to perform the swap function call in our main function. First, we'll need to declare this numbers int slice. Let's give it the values of 6, 1, 4, 2, 9. Next, we'll, get, we'll make the function call, passing the numbers int slice. Let's say that we want to perform the swap at the position 0 and 1. After that, we can go ahead and print out the int slice again. With this, let's go ahead and run this program for the very first time. Now, what we are expecting is this getting swapped. So the numbers here getting printed out should be 1, 6, 4, 2, 9. And indeed, that's what we are getting back. Next, let's perform the check to see if the elements that we are about to swap are in order or out of order, and only perform the swap action if the two elements are out of order, as we can see right here. Also make sure to update the positions here. If we go ahead and run this program again, we should be able to see we are still performing the swap because numbers add uh, zero is larger than numbers add zero plus one. So we perform the swap. Next, let's go ahead and perform a full round of a bubbling up. We will start to add index is 0, so index n minus 2, because i plus 1 here will put us at n minus 1. We can do n minus 1 here because we are having a smaller then rather than a smaller than uh, smaller and equal to go ahead and put the if condition inside of the for loop run this program again we should be able to see one full round of a bubbling up being performed here last but not least we will need to perform the one round of bubbling up n times
and put this entire for loop inside of this entire i for loop inside of this j for loop right here. So if we go ahead and run this program again, we should be able to see the entire in slice or collection of values uh, being completely sorted right here. And that's it. Now, there may be some optimizations that you can make, but this is the gist of how to implement a bubble sort in Go. Make sure to get your free Golang cheat sheets at golangdojo.com slash cheat sheets. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you ninjas in the very next video. Thank you.